question in YouTube comments. My Ketu Dasha is about to start. What will happen? I will become headless. I will lose everything that I have. My God. Will Ketu make me headless? Or am I already headless? <laughs> yes, dreaded fear of Ketu Mahadasha is always there. Those freaking seven years, my God. I get people ask, who ask me, my God, sir, after 25 years, I will get this dreaded Ketu Mahadasha. Can you please tell me how can I save myself? So uh, the general belief is that Ketu is headless. So he will end up making everybody headless. Okay. Now that could happen, of course. Uh, no doubt that could definitely happen. But it doesn't have to be true for everybody. It depends on your overall horoscope. So today I will give you some parameters by which you could judge that if these parameters are there in your horoscope. Uh, Maybe Ketu Dasha will be headless, but if these parameters are not there or if there are other good things in the horoscope, then necessarily not that Ketu Dasha gives you headlessness, all right? Headlessness does not come from one planet. It comes from the entire horoscope. So we should not blame everything on one planet. That's not good actually, all right? So as usual, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it below and my consultation uh, website is also down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you from our headless K2. <laughs> so many people are concerned what will happen in their K2, Antar Dasha, Mahadasha, or if K2 is conjunct another planet, what will happen in that planet's Mahadasha, Antar Dasha. So this video is for them actually. Or anybody who is interested to learn K2. So what is Ketu? He doesn't have a head, as you know. The head is Rahu, and then the body which is left is Ketu. So Lord Vishnu had chopped off this head, uh, and Ketu was left alone. <laughs> so what is Ketu basically? Um, Ketu can give you a feeling that you are left out, you are behind, you are losing, you are going back. <laughs> that feeling Ketu could give you. But there are so many other things which changes uh, this attitude, this behavior of Ketu. So I've always seen if somebody's Jupiter is well placed, then the positive traits of Ketu will come out. You will become more introspective. You will be uh, you will be liking yourself in seclusion, which means you will be able to stay alone and not feel lonely. One of the symptoms of a very bad Ketu is. You cannot stay alone. You feel lonely if you are alone because uh, you don't like yourself. <laughs> you may think, oh, who doesn't like themselves? Yes, if you are alone and if you do not like that, that means you are not with a very good person, right? So, therefore, now I'm not saying you should all stay alone, but if that happens sometimes, then if you feel that we are not able to stay, then a uh, serious problem, there you go. So therefore, if Jupiter is well placed, uh, then you get the beautiful traits of Ketu. Okay? Or if Jupiter is linked with Ketu, it, it's like Ketu gets a head. Okay? And not head exactly, the guidance of the Guru is there, or guidance of the scriptures. Or the Ninth Lord can also help in this regard. So the other, or if Jupiter is badly placed, then it gives you a fake optimism. As I said in one of my videos recently, bad Jupiter's number one symptom is uh, fake optimism. So then what happens? Already Ketu is headless. And then there's, you know, fake optimism. It's like double headlessness, right? It's like saying you are headless and you don't even know where, where to go or how should you be optimistic in life or to what extent and in which area. So these are things which you have absolutely no clue. So then what happens is um, you feel that uh, I'm not only headless, but I will eternally be headless. So then this feeling could be there. Okay, And I've seen if the eighth Lord is also linked with K2, then also this can happen more of headlessness. And if the ninth Lord is linked, then um, the good things could come out more. Okay? Good things like you know, 
spiritual knowledge, learning and all this because it was a very peculiar planet. It's, it rules confusion and enlightenment both. So it depends uh, which planets are linked with Ketu and uh, how Ketu is affecting the horoscope and, the, and how the horoscope is affecting Ketu. That is also very important. What are the other planets telling? Okay. So you should check Jupiter and the ninth lord. Very, very, very crucial if you want to judge Ketu. Never forget okay, the eighth lord, ninth lord and Jupiter. The other planet which you must check is the uh, Lagna Lord. Okay? Lagna Lord is really very crucial. Why do I say this? Because the Lagnesh gives you focus in life. You will be focused on anything. Good things, bad things. So people say a strong Lagna Lord gives you strong focus in life. Well, a strong Lagna Lord does not give you focus. It gives you focus in the right areas. Even a bad Lagna Lord can make you very focused. But you'll be focused like uh, in the in things which uh, will do no good for you in the long run. Okay. But does it mean that you are not focused? No, not necessarily. If a person says, oh, I don't have focus in life, you know, actually I'm just um, watching TV and I'm just wasting my time, wasting my life. So then I tell them that, no, my dear sir, my dear madam, you are focused on watching TV. You are focused on uh, sitting in the couch all day. You are focused on absolutely doing nothing. It's not that easy, you know. <laughs> but what's the problem? The problem is they are not focused on the right areas. So this can happen if Ketu is not well placed, that you are focused but on the things which you should not be focused ideally. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, so you can check that how much focused you are in life and the Lagna Lord is very important. So if the Lagna Lord is well placed, you are focused in the areas which make you a better human being. And if the Lagna Lord is not well placed, then it can happen that you are focused on things which are pulling you down. So then Ketu becomes even more headless and he uh, makes you do crazy stuff actually. Okay. So this is another indication. The other indication is um, if your fifth house is damaged, okay. fifth lord is not well placed. Why, 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 why? Because fifth house, as I say, is the reason why you get up in the morning. Fifth house tells you what is that which you cherish in life? What is that which you value? What is that which you want to do in life? Not career, not uh, money or it could be that also, but what do you want to do in life in general? Anything it could be. So that's exactly what uh, the fifth house represents. So if that is the fifth lord is not well placed, or if you have a debilitated planet in the fifth house, then it could also happen that um, you there's no reason why you get up in the morning. It's like you don't get up uh, because you want to. It's like uh, your body kicks you out. You know. <laughs> so then you may feel that Ketu is making you headless during his dasha because there is a lack of direction in the horoscope by default. So in that case, this can happen. Otherwise, it's not necessary. Then what can happen if the fifth lord is well placed or you have good planets in the fifth house? Then it can happen that uh, during that Ketu dasha, you may uh, you may take a U-turn and do something which you have never done before. That's possible, but it's not necessary that uh, you will be headless always. Okay. Another thing that I have seen is um, the fourth house. The fourth house is also very important, and the Karaka for the fourth house moon. Why do I say this? Because moon moon uh, is the lord of all the nakshatras. You know, he is uh, Krishna says in the Gita, nakshatra naam aham sashi that among the nakshatras, I am the moon. Moon is not a nakshatra, but he is the ruler of all the nakshatras. So, <clears throat> therefore, if moon is not well placed, then what happens is, uh, or the fourth lord is not well placed, then what happens is, the planets, all the planets are sitting in some nakshatras. You know, There are 10 active nakshatras, 9 planetary nakshatras, and 1 the ascendant nakshatra. So these nakshatras are by default not able to uh, 
guide you for a better life or they are not able to give you the right guidance so even if a planet is in a particular nakshatra you if it headless you, you don't know where i should go what i should do but if the moon is strong or the fourth lord is strong uh, then you will understand that uh, these nakshatras which have these 10 planets you know nine planets and the ascendant they are really showing their effects the good sides of these nakshatras are coming out but if if moon is not well placed then what happens the negative side of the nakshatras will come out okay or the nakshatras are not able to uh, make you do things which will uh, give you a better life later on all right so therefore judge these placements the entire horoscope and then only you can find if your okay to will make you headless or not so don't just go by a blind dictum oh, okay to will make me headless otherwise it doesn't work you know you 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 end up becoming more headless or right? you may not be that headless but now you become more headless if you think that okay to will make you headless definitely all right that will be all from my side if you are new to the channel then please uh, subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me my website is also down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him definitely even if your ketu is making you headless you will still find him all right thank you